We like to hide. We like to pretend, but we need people that will hold us accountable and pull us higher, that will push us to be who God has called us to be. All this and more is why you need to be plugged into a community today. So let's get into it. So today God kind of put it on my heart to speak to this this need in in men and in just people in general because this this not only applies to men but this applies to everybody everybody that's trying to live on the earth basically so everybody our society is not set up for us to live in a community you know we have very fast paced lives Everything's online. Everything's on a virtual meeting. It's fast paced, fast food, delivery food. Don't have to move a muscle. Don't have to work for anything. Basically, it's basically pay for everything to be easier. It's just not set up for a community because in a community, it's hard. You have to actually interact with people. You're face to face. That is the genuine interactions that we are built for. That's what we're made for. In today's society, we're just focused on creating highlight reels. We, we're making posts for social media. We want people to see the highlights. We want more followers. We want more clicks. We want more views. We want more subscribers. We edit our videos so they're going to be high speed. They keep your attention. Every five to six seconds, something's changing. Something's moving. We scroll mindlessly for hours a day. But we need to slow down. We need to slow down as a community. We need to slow down as a society. And we need to slow down as men. We need community. We need real interactions. We need raw emotions. We need face-to-face -face encounters with other people. We need to be real. We need to be vulnerable. So get in a community. You know, we hear so much about mental health. People will just push you to a, a doctor or whatever. But most of these problems can be solved inside of a small group of people that are going through the same thing, have been through the same thing. Just have your best intentions. Of course, there is room for professional help. If you need that help, go get it. At the end of the day, this is a vital piece in everybody's life that we're missing out as a society completely. We need to get in community. You need to get face to face with somebody. You need to have raw communications that it's not going to be easy to say some things that need to be said. It's not going to be easy to tell people how you really feel inside in your heart, but that's what it takes to get better. So get in a community. This pertains to the larger community as a whole. Get in a church. Find a good church, a good local church around you. If you can't find one, find the best one. I mean, what other options do you have? Whatever you got to do, find your people, find your tribe, find your community. And even deeper than a church, men specifically, find a God-fearing, Jesus-loving group of brothers that are going to push you to be better, that are going to hold you accountable and you know, people you like, you don't want to like despise them and not want to see them, but you know, you want them to push you. I was thinking about this lately. There's some things that Abby, my wife could tell me. I might just kind of like, yeah, yeah, I know. But if, but if Mike, my, my brothers, my, my guys, my fellas, they call me out on something. It's like, okay, this is legit, which obviously you need to listen to your wife guys. I, you know, I probably got canceled for saying that, <laughs> but anyways, it's going to take intentionality. You know, these things don't just happen on accident. Of course, finding friends and the jobs you have and the, the people you interact with on the day to day, a lot of that is a coincidence. A lot of that is just how it ended up being, but to f really foster those relationships that are going to change your life and to change other lives, it's going to take intentionality. You're going to have to intentionally find those relationships and pursue those relationships. When you actually have those relationships and when you want to dig deep inside of this community, it's going to take intentionality because we like to hide. You know, we like to put our, our problems back here behind us where nobody can see them. We like to doctor them up. We like to, you know, make it look like everything's okay when in reality, nobody's got it all together. We all have issues. We all have problems, but we've been programmed to stay safe. We want to protect ourselves. We don't want to put ourselves out there and get hurt. When you do that and you trust the wrong people, you will get hurt. But it's going to take intentionality. You have to step out. You have to put yourself on the line. You may get hurt. You kind of have to brush that off and keep going. You have to be intentional and you have to be intentionally vulnerable. And if you want to foster that type of community where, you know, it's a safe place 
And it's a place where you can go. You can lay it all out there. You can trust that your problems are safe, but also trust that these people can help you. They can push you. But you have to be vulnerable because if you want that culture to exist, you have to foster it. Somebody has to step out and be like, hey, I'm dealing with this. I'm struggling with this. Because if one person doesn't do it, the rest of them aren't going to do it. The odds are that if one person steps out and says, look, I'm really struggling with this, 50% of the group at least are going to be like, I struggle with that too. And I'm glad you said something because I was honestly ashamed to say it. Shame, you know, shame is the problem, right? Because we all, we all mess up. We all sin. But it's that shame that keeps us from genuine interaction with, with the people around us, the people in our community, our brothers. Most importantly, with God, we like to hide when we, we, you know, we mess up and we're like, dang, man, I'm a terrible person because I did this, which is not true. God still loves you. Those people in your community still love you. Your brother still loves you. You know, your wife's still going to be married to you. Hopefully, I mean, there, there are some extremes that you could do that kind of unravels that. You're safe in this type of community to get it to that place that, that you want it to be, you have to be intentionally vulnerable. You have to put yourself out there. A true leader is going to be the one that does that. You're not going to, going to wait for everybody else to make the move. I've kind of struggled with that in my life of kind of taking the back burner and let everybody else take the lead. But I feel like more so now I'm in the point in life where it's just like, let's get it. You know, <laughs> another reason why you need to be intentionally vulnerable is because people can't read your mind. They cannot tell what you're going through. You know, you have all this stuff in your life you're focused on and that's going on in your day-to-day -day life and that prevents you from doing, you know, everything that you want to do in a day, reaching out to all these people you want to reach out to. I don't know what you want to do. What I'm trying to say is everybody has a full life going on. Everybody is busy. They got to work. They got bills to pay. They got all their struggles that they're dealing with internally. You know, it's not 100% on the other person to reach out to you. Right. You need to do some reaching out because people cannot read your mind. If you're in a community, it's the job of each other to reach out to the other, the other to the other. People cannot read minds, so they don't know what you're going through unless you put it out there. And there's a certain extent that they need to reach out, but you also need to reach out to them and put it out there if you need help. If you if you're like really dealing with something, reach out. Like if you don't have anybody to reach out to, reach out to me. We're going to get into some ways of how you could plug into a community like this, but you have to be intentionally vulnerable and you have to put yourself out there it's by no means going to solve the problems when you when you reach out when you lay it out there to somebody but just saying what you're going through you know this is a big percentage but 50 percent of the problems right there just the shame of that you're going through it you know every time i've had something i was dealing with and i put it out there you know it was the hardest thing in my life to put it out there like this is not easy when i got done i felt significantly better just exposing that shame. That's the thing about shame is it, it causes you to hide. It causes you to run from community. It causes you to run from people that want to help you. When you put it out there, shame's gone at that point, right? Because then you're confident that these people, you know, they love you and they have your back. God's got you, bro. So have confidence that this community that you're in, most of all, Jesus loves you. There's nothing that you can do to change that. At the end of the day, God already knows what you did and what you're going through. God works through people. So don't isolate yourself because of shame. The best way you can combat shame is just putting it out there. Find the right people. Get in the community that you trust because there's some people you, you don't want to tell anything to. But you're going to feel significantly better when you lay it out there. At that point, you've defeated shame. Practically speaking, for most people, like I said, this is going to look like joining a church. That's the first step. If you're not going to church, find a church. You need to be in a people of God. You need to be around God-fearing people. And I know there's a lot of bad churches or whatever. You're going to get out of church what you put into it. So once you get in a church, serve. Get plugged in. Get into small groups. And if they don't have the small groups, they don't have a men's ministry or anything like that, start it engage the groups they have or if they have something that's just not quite there yet like i said you have to be intentional with creating this community you have to foster the vulnerability you have to foster the commitment to one another like you you're basically going to reap what you sow in my opinion men's ministry is very overlooked there's a, i feel like there's always a priority on women's ministry but it's because the women step out and do it the women are taking the initiative and the men are hiding they're in the back with shame right step out men Men, step out and create a group. Like if your church is not meeting regularly with just the men, do it. Set it up. And if they don't have smaller groups where you can get together and be vulnerable and grow together, start it. Do whatever, you know, do what you got to do. Be creative. 
I'm making this sound a little easier than it probably is going to be. Finding a community is not always going to be easy. It's going to take time to find that right church or find that right men's group. If your church doesn't have one, I don't think there's a problem with you going to another church's men's group. But along the way, just remember that you have full access to Jesus. You could pray right now. You could talk to Jesus right now. You could read his word right now. You could have that relationship with Jesus right now. Don't forget that. Jesus works through people as well. You know, you can have that one-on-one -on -one relationship, but you need people in your life. You need people that are going to help you, that are going to push you, that you could do the same to them. It's not all take, take, take. It's give and take. Like I said, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. If you're having trouble finding a community, pray for it. Ask him to lead you to a community of like-minded believers, and he's going to provide that. We had a church transition recently, and when we first started coming back, I was like, man, I just don't feel like I'm plugged into the community. And within a couple of weeks, I'm plugged into the community. <laughs> and it takes it takes some uh, some stepping out and some work on your part. I was all right, you're going to have to do a little footwork. But a very good, very smart, the, probably the best step you could take at this point Join the Burden Society. We're on Discord. We're a community just designed to push you to be a better man in every aspect. Get plugged in. But like I said, you really need that local, one-on-one, face-to-face -on -face community to hold you accountable and to push you. So plug into a community. Get better. Put yourself out there. And at the end of the day, community is going to make you a better man, a better person, a better Christian. Community is going to push you and mold you into the image of God. It's going to make you a better person. It's going to push you. It may not be the easiest thing to do. It's going to be well worth it. Y'all get plugged into a community. If you enjoyed this video, put it down in the comments. I'm hoping to do more content like this. Y'all go get after it. Get plugged into a community. Join the Discord. Stay tuned. We have podcasts out every Monday. Put work in podcast. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.